Hello, when you loan a camera from the media store, you will get a camera bag which will contain the camera body, in this case a Nikon D810 or D800, a battery charger and a memory card reader. We place in the bags a checklist of the items that exist within the bag Please check that these are present when you return the camera to the store. When you loan a camera, you will also need to loan a lens separately. We have a range of lenses in store, ranging from telephoto zoom lenses. This is a 24-120 lens. Through to prime lenses, this is an 85 and a 50mm prime lens. Prime lenses have a fixed focal length and usually have wider apertures which enable uh, more effective shooting with a shallow depth of field. Zoom lenses are more versatile. attach the lens, you will need to remove the camera lens back cap and the camera body cap. Notice the white dot on the camera body and also on the rear of the lens. The dots will need to be aligned. Nikon lenses, the front zoom ring controls the focal length on the zoom lens and in manual mode the focus ring which is at the rear adjusts the focus. Use this switch to switch between manual and autofocus and also some Nikon lenses have a vibration reduction system which means with this on, you can reduce camera shake for telephoto lens work and macro photography. To turn the camera on, simply move the switch from off to on that sits around the shutter button. Other important aspects are the main control dial, which is used for changing the aperture, the mode button which used in tandem with the sub-command dial would change the shooting modes, the exposure compensation button is used to change exposure compensation and finally the red button here is used for recording when in movie mode. The mode dial here enables you to press the mode release button and switch between the various different shooting modes. The WB button allows you to press this and select between the white balance options 
using the sub command dial. The quality enables you to select the different quality formats available. The exposure metering enables you to switch between the metering modes and the ISO enables you to select your preferred ISO sensitivity. If you press the info button, you can bring up on the rear display the current camera settings and you can use these to make adjustments. So if I press the mode button, we can see here that I can switch between manual, aperture priority, shutter speed priority and programmed auto mode. In manual mode, if I use the main command dial, I can affect the aperture size and use that to overexpose or underexpose using the, exposure, the camera's exposure meter as a guide. The sub command dial affects the shutter speed using the meter once again to understand the exposure. In the aperture priority mode, the main command front dial is used to change the aperture and you will notice that the shutter speed changes accordingly which leaves us with an average exposure. Use the rear dial to compensate the exposure which is indicated here and you can underexpose or overexpose by third stop increments. A third, two thirds of a stop and a full stop overexposure and a third, two thirds and a full stop underexposure. This enables fine tuning of your exposure. Select shutter speed priority and use the sub command dial to change the camera's shutter speed and you will notice that the camera will automatically change the aperture to give an average exposure reading. Again, if you want to compensate with the exposure, use, in this case, the main command dial to underexpose and overexpose. If you find that a value is flashing, this is a warning to tell you, to tell you that exposure will not be good. So you need to, in that case, change the exposure accordingly and the display will stop flashing. P, or program mode, enables you to use the sub-command dial here and you can scroll through and it will change both the shutter speed and the aperture to give you an average exposure. Once again, if you want to use exposure compensation, use the main command dial to do so. Before you use the camera, it's a good idea to set it up. And to do this, you need to access the menu with this button here. And if you, first of all, scroll down to the setup menu and scroll right using the multi-controller here to format memory card and press the middle of the multi-controller and press OK, press up and OK to format the memory card. Also, if you go to the shooting menu and color space, make sure that you are set up in Adobe RGB rather than sRGB because this color space 
contains more colour information and offers better quality. It's also a good idea to reset the camera to the default settings. And this is done by pressing the exposure compensation and quality buttons indicated with green dots simultaneously for around two seconds. This will then reset to defaults. To change the image quality settings, press the quality button, which is situated at the top of the camera on the mode dial. Press and hold, and you will see the, the, mode, uh, the image quality settings indicated. Use the sub command dial to scroll through from raw, which we recommend. Raw is uncompressed and unprocessed and the best quality that you can get from the camera. Also, you can have raw and basic JPEG, normal JPEG with raw, and raw with fine, high quality JPEG. There are also options for basic JPEG, normal JPEG, and fine JPEG. Indicated here is the number of frames for each of those settings. It's worth knowing that JPEGs are compressed and processed and not making the most of the image quality available from the camera. Nikon cameras also have an option for TIFF format, which is uncompressed but is also processed. Once again, we recommend always shooting in RAW, but RAW requires processing in image editing software. To change the ISO, press the ISO button, which is again situated on the mode dial, and use the subcommand dial to scroll between your ISO settings. There are options for low ISO, which gives you very, very fine, intricate details to your imagery, and this scrolls all the way through to Twelve thousand eight hundred ISO and beyond that high. We recommend always using the lowest ISO possible for image quality and detail quality. Higher ISOs can include noise, which is an artifact that can look unappealing. Press the exposure metering button on the top here and use the sub command dial to switch between matrix, center weighted, spot and highlight weighted modes. It's worth experimenting with these to find out what meets your exact requirements. The white balance button enables you to select through the preset white balance options. And these include auto, tungsten or incandescent, fluorescent, daylight, flash, cloudy, and shade. Use the main command dial to select through various different options within each white balance preset setting. Again, it's worth experimenting with these. Also, there is a Kelvin white balance setting and this enables you to dial in with the main command dial an accurate Kelvin setting when you know the colour temperature that you are trying to achieve. We recommend for accurate colour rendition that you select the pre 
option. This is for a custom white balance. To use the pre-custom white balance mode, first of all, that you need to make sure that you fill the camera frame with something white or neutral. Something like a grey card or a white sheet of paper. And then you need to make sure that you overexpose slightly by about one stop to compensate for the reflectivity of, of something white. Now, if you make sure that the camera is set to manual mode, as the focus will not be able to uh, gain autofocus on something plain without detail. Press and hold the white balance button and pre will be indicated as flashing in either the top viewfinder or the eye viewfinder. Take a shot and if white balance is achieved, the word good will be seen flashing in the top viewfinder or eye viewfinder and then you have set your white balance. Once you have your custom white balance, don't forget to return your lens back to autofocus. Most Nikon cameras have a switch to the left hand side of the body to switch between autofocus and manual focus. When in autofocus, if you press and hold the button, you can use the sub-command dial to switch between autofocus continuous and autofocus single shot. Use the main command dial to switch between the various different modes, which range from group to single and various different points. Use the AFM switch to select between AFS which is single focus, and use the main command dial to switch between group, auto, and single point focus. You can use the multi-controller to move your focus point around the frame and adjust your focus point as necessary. If you use the sub-command dial, you can switch to AF continuous, which is good when you're shooting moving subjects. And again, use the main command dial to switch between single shot, nine point, 21 points, 51 points, 3D and group. Again, you can Use the multi-controller to adjust your focus points within the frame. Nikon cameras have some useful buttons here. The AEL and AFL lock can be used for locking exposure and focus on the subject. Simply press once to lock and once again to unlock. The AF on button is useful, particularly when photographing moving subjects. And if you press and hold this, you can gain continual autofocus and then use the shutter button to take your shot. The camera has a live view function and you can switch between stills photography and movie. Simply press the live view button to activate and you can see all the information displayed on the rear screen. In live view mode you can zoom into the image and gain autofocus by pressing the shutter button slightly or the AF on button and you can 
scroll around using the multi-controller to check the detail. In movie mode, you have a similar view. The only difference is that to record, you need to press the red record button at the top of the camera and then press this a second time to stop recording. Taking photographs. We're set in manual mode and to take a photograph you simply make sure that you adjust the shutter speed or the aperture to what you need. I'm going to take a number of shots. The first is an average exposure. Simply press the shutter button halfway to get autofocus or press the AFM button to get autofocus and continue pressing the shutter button to take the shot. We can see the results here. If I now overexpose by a third of a stop, we will make the image brighter. And if I continue to overexpose by a stop, we can see the results here. Equally underexposing by a third of a stop, and a full stop will make the exposure a bit darker. To review the images, press the playback arrow button. And here we can see the images are indicated, the last one that was taken indicated first, and use the multi-controller to scroll through. Here we can see the changes that were made through different exposure settings. To delete an image, simply press the waste bin button and press a second time to delete. You can press the magnifying button to explore the image for detail and focus. And if you press the minus button, and continue pressing, you can then bring up a range of thumbnails so that you can view your images more quickly. Once you've downloaded your images and returned the card to the camera, it's a good idea to format the card once more and this will ensure that your images and all the information is removed and cannot be accessed by the next user. To access the memory card, simply slide back the memory card compartment cover and dependent on the card you have inserted if it's a SD card simply press the card and remove when you have downloaded your images make sure you replace the card with the contacts going in first and the label facing towards the back of the camera With a CF card, simply press the grey button to release the card and remove. When you insert the card, make sure that the holes in the card go in first and again the label is facing towards the back of the camera. Gently push in, if there's any resistance, remove and reinsert. Shut the door. And that's it. You can access the battery 
at the base of the camera. Simply pull back the catch to open the door. Remove the yellow latch to release the battery. To replace the battery, make sure the contacts go in first. Push the battery forward so the catch will hold it and shut the door. 